Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kohalo Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory be to our power, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, who's the God of heaven and earth, and his only begotten Son, Amashiach Yahweh Shai. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like minded elders that teach his word in truth and in sincerity. Barak Yim La, Habayath, Madawada, blessings to the house of David, which you brothers labor in. Day in and day out, given all diligence to make your calling and election sure, help and seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Amashiach Yabashai is at hand, and to the Akim Wa'akwath, brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached. Unto you I say Shalom. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is the brother Sakalai back another day, all through the spirit of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. And I pray this lesson is edifying, exhorting, and comforting unto you believers, right, who are going to view the lesson. And I pray that um, this lesson finds you in peace, which is Philippians 4 and 7, the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is the, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding by way of the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. So let's jump into it. Remember Lot's wife. So this is found in the scriptures, right, for us to, to remember and to think upon story of Lot's wife and let's get that <clears throat> so the title of this lesson is remember Lot's wife now why is that found and why is that expressed something that happened back in Genesis in the New Testament because it's a very important story especially for the times we are in right this is the book of Luke 17 and verse 32 it says remember Lot's wife I read it again Luke 17 and 32 it says, remember Lot's wife. It's the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. He said to remember Lot's wife. Very key, very important thing, right? And very important concerning faith and faith in these last days that we are in. Before all chaos, hell, and destruction is here, the time of Jacob's trouble and lawlessness and ultimately the missiles. As you hear the sirens in the background, ultimately, that's the inevitability, inevitability is that the missiles are going to hit Babylon the Great in various parts of the earth. There's going to be nothing but chaos on the earth and only the elect are going to make it out of here. Pertaining to Zechariah 13 verses 7 through 9. Only the elect, the one third of the nation of Israel are going to make it out of here. So the scriptures say, remember Lot's wife. Now let's go to the actual count after I get this next verse here. This is um, Luke 17 and 33. The words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly and incorrectly call Christ. Luke 17 and 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So scripture says whoever seeks to, to save his life is going to actually lose his life. Now, we get this quick precept because the, our Lord spoke and said these things, you know, because this would be important and pertinent for the times we are in now. Luke 9 for those that seek to save their life, they're going to lose it. So as we go into the story of disbelief, as we remember Lot's wife and lack of faith, it goes into the idea of one having the mindset of wanting to save his life or wanting to salvage, right, whatever they might have on this side in this world. Whether it's a job, money, comfort of living, being accepted, family, are all examples of wanting to save your life. Now let's show that this is the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, Luke nine and verse 25, Luke nine and verse 25. And it reads, for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? So what advantage would it be, right? To have the knowledge of this truth and not finish the course. What advantage would it be to know, to know that you're Israelite but you don't return to the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And, and return to the God of heaven and earth and, and actually do the things that he say is uh, needed in order to receive salvation. So what good is having this truth, being in this truth, knowing the truth, having the name of the heavenly father or any of these things, right? Which are the true riches and the depth of riches found in the Holy Scriptures. I was just speaking to a brother today about this. You know, and it was a beautiful conversation. You know, a brother that um, was knowledgeable about the fact that we are the Israelites, 
And I pray through the spirit of Yahweh Shabbat Shai. Hey, that the Lord allows for this brother, you know, according to his will, Adawan Ratazah, which means Lord willing, he allows him to come into more of the knowledge of the truth. Because I could see that the spirit was on him. Luke 9 and 25 again. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? So what advantage is it if ultimately it's not going to lead to being protected and being preserved in these last days? What advantage would it be to have anything, right? Whether it's once again, knowledge, riches of the world, the, of the lust of the flesh, so on and so forth. Is not going to amount to anything ultimately. So we are to remember Lot's wife once again as an example of disbelief and what a lack of faith gets you in these last days. What is that going to actually ultimately lead to? Right? Because the Lord said, any man that put his hand to the plow and turned back is not fit for the kingdom. Now, let's show that even further. So that would be any believer that would have come into this truth. What, what, what advantage is it? What purpose is it if you're not going to actually finish the work? If you're not going to actually endure unto the end, as the scriptures say. What, what, what purpose would it have been for? What good would that have been ultimately? Right? What profit a man if he gained the world and lose his soul? Genesis 19 and verse 14. And it reads, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters and said, up, get you out of this place for the Lord Yahweh will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. Verse 15, meaning they didn't believe, right? They had disbelief. Verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot saying, arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city, lest you be destroyed as well. Verse 16, and while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of, the, of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord Yahweh being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, it says, and set him without the city. Verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life, look not behind thee. So the angels gave them, right, very clear instructions, which were the instructions that were, you know, given from the Most High. Genesis 19 and 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them for, forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in, in all the plain, escape to the mountains, or escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Verse 18, and Lot said unto them, O not so, Adawan, or my Lord, behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Verse 20, continuing on, let me just highlight this on down. Verse 20, behold, now the city is near to flee and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It is not a little one and my soul shall live. Verse 21, and he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing that I will not overthrow this city. It says, for the which thou hast spoken, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything it says, till thou, till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun, it says, was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Verse 24. And the Lord Yahweh reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord Yahweh out of heaven. So the Lord rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, which America is likened unto spiritual Sodom and Egypt today. And this place is going to have rain, fire, uh, or hellfire, so like you rain down on it, just as Sodom and Gomorrah did. And that's going to be the missiles and the concentrated fire from the chariots, which is the coming of our Lord and the angels, the Allah Hayyam in the Hebrew. Genesis 19 and 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities. 
and that which grew upon the ground. Verse 26, but white, but the, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Now let's read that again concerning, right? What it said in Luke 17 in verse 32, remember Lot's wife, Genesis 19 and verse 26, but his wife, whose wife, Lot's wife, because he had his two daughters with him as well, and they actually made it out. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. See, so that shows you what lack of faith gets you. Now, if the angels and the Lord, had, the Most High had given these instructions to the angels and the angels told them that the Most High is going to overthrow this place and don't look back, just continue forward until you be out of the city. But by no means look back. And she looked back. That means she didn't believe. She didn't have faith. Right? There was something that was behind her that, that, that she was still holding on to. And we are in the times where we can't have anything that's going to allow for us, right, to look back or to go back. Or, or, or to not have the uh, obedience that's required in order to receive salvation. Because the scriptures tell us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So the Lord is, is requiring that we be obedient to him to the best of our abilities, according to his will. Now, let's show that even further. This is the book of Proverbs. Get a few precepts, right? So this is a prime example of lack of faith. A prime example, a prime example of lack of faith and what a lack of faith is going to result in, especially in these last days that we're in. Proverbs 24 and 9, the thought of foolishness is sin. So that thought that comes in, in, in one's mind Right. It has to be reproved through the word and be filtered through the scriptures. Right. That's why we get the understanding. That's why we actually labor in this faith. We read and study and return to this word as Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. As you are returning, you return and, and you fill yourself with this truth. You hide the word in your heart. The scriptures say Proverbs 24 and verse nine, the thought of foolishness is sin. So even the thought a foolishness is sin. And that today would be what? Thinking that, that the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yabashah is not going to make good on his word, right? If you come into the knowledge of this truth and you turn back, the Lord said his soul ain't going to have no delight in you, right? If you don't believe unto death, right? How can you re receive the crown? How can you receive the reward of the kingdom? The thought of foolishness is sin and the scorner is an abomination to men. Verse 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So that means you really didn't believe because adversity is going to show forth your faith. So it's not in the good times, right? It's the times when we're tested, when everything is good. And then, you know, everybody believes everybody uh, loves the most high. But what about when your faith is tested? What about when adversity is here? Right. What about when you're down, you know, uh, so-called down on your luck, as people say, which luck is not you know, true according to the Bible, but that, that saying in the world, when you're down on your luck, when you're, when you're dealing with bad times, right? So when great evil is here, if you don't have, if you're not built up in this word, then your, your faith is going to fail you. Meaning your strength is small. You truly don't have faith. Cause once again, our Lord said, be faithful unto death. Let's get that. Our Lord said, be faithful unto death. This is the book of revelation two. Going right to the point in verse 10, Revelation 2 and 10, the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, this is red letter. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt, shalt suffer, meaning the things in all the, the tribulation and hardship and hell that, we, that we're going through. And when it gets worse, right, we're coming into the times that's never been on the earth. When you read in the book of Daniel 12 and verse 1, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, speaking of Esau, Edom, the man of sin, right? The so-called white man today. He's the devil, the deceiver of the earth shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. So the Lord said, be faithful unto death and he would give us a crown of life, right? So that that's what faithfulness and, and belief in the words and doing the words of the most high and returning to the commandments, offending less and rehearsing the righteous acts, which are all things the scriptures tell us to do in order to receive salvation. That that's going to be the end result, right? Unto those that, that remain faithful 
unto the end. Unto the end. Now, we just can't do it for a period of time. And then, you know, when things get hard or we don't like something or we go through particular uh, tribulation, and, you know, and, and then, you know, lose the faith or get weary in well-doing, we have to continue upon having this truth and, and finish the race, run through the tape, so to speak. So we have to remember Lot's wife because that's a lack of faith and disbelief. And that only leads to destruction. Now, let's get a few more precepts. This is the book of Hebrews. This is Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. And uh, we'll go to the point. Hebrews 10. And this is 38. And verse 39. Hebrews 10 and verse 38. It says, now the just shall live by faith. And who are the just? Those that are going to be justified by the Lord. Those that are the chosen. They would actually be exhibiting elect like behavior the elect or is the remnant who's going to actually make it out of here hebrews 10 and 38 now the just shall live by faith so those that are going to be justified are actually going to have faith now let's show that through this precept that comes to mind and we'll come right back it's the book of revelation 14 revelation 14 and verse 12 it says here is the patience of the saints the saints are the believers here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shai. So those that keep the commandments are who? Speaking of making reference to the elect of the nation of Israel, one third of the nation of Israel. They are those that keep the commandments and the faith unto the end. Continuing on, going back to Hebrews 10 and verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man, what? Look back, go back into the world get weary and well-doing, right, lose the oil, don't finish the race. Um, I think I always tell brothers, get caught clock watching. You know, you're constantly waiting to see, saying, you know, the Lord should have already done this by now. I've been doing this for two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten years. The Lord should have already been here. We on the most highest time clock, not on our own, right? So, so we should be thankful for being here and be patient, be patient. The Lord says, suffer patiently, little children. Hebrews 10 and verse 38, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So those that would draw back, those that will become weary in the faith, the Lord is not going to have no pleasure in them because they don't have, they truly don't have faith. Because faith, once again, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And having faith means that you, you truly trust in the God of heaven and earth and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Hebrews 10 and verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. So drawing back leads to destruction. That's what perdition is, destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So the true believers, the elect, I pray I'm of that number, are going to believe, it says, unto the saving of their souls. Right? That's having unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. Not being doubtful. Now, let's go forward to Hebrews 11. Because I quoted that in Hebrews 11 and 1, but I want to get this here in verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, but without faith, this is how important faith is, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we can't please the Most High and His only begotten Son if we don't have faith. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is. So those that will come to God, the Most High, they have to believe that he is, and the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which means in the Hebrew, he is. It says, but he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the most high God of heaven and earth, through his uh, only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, right? They're going to reward those that diligently seek them. As we read that the Lord said he would give us a crown of life if we are faithful, right? Unto the end, unto death. So now let's show that further as well here in the book of second Ezra. So this is, um, second Ezra, the 15th chapter and the fourth verse, second Ezra 15 and verse four, it says for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all the, un all the non-believers, all the gangsayers and naysayers are going to die because of their disbelief. Because, they're, because of their lack of faith. 
So now, let's continue on and show that. When you go into the uh, word faithful, let's get the word faithful here in the blue letter. Let's get the word faithful. Because I got it. Let's go back here to Revelation, the second chapter. This is an example of the word faithful. Showing you how important faith is. Now we're going to look up this word here. Going into the faithful. Because it says all the unfaithful are going to die in their unfaithfulness. So now we brought this out earlier, Revelation 2 and 10, right? Um, let's get the word for faithful. It's the word pistos. It's G4103 in the word pistos. It's the word, once again, for faithful. Strong's G4103. Pistos. Pistos. The word pistos. Right? The word faithful. Trusty. Faithful. Of persons who show themselves faithful in the transaction of business, the execution of commands, or the discharge of official duties. One who kept his plight, his plighted faith, worthy of trust. Right? That, that would be us. That would be in the knowledge of this truth. You brothers and you sisters. Definition C that can be relied on so those that have are faithful are those that are reliable and you have to show yourself a pattern of good works the scriptures say that shows that you are reliable by continuing to keep the law statutes and commandments it says easily persuaded we're easily persuaded by the word believing confiding trusting in the new testament one who trusts in god's promises so the believers the elect we trust in the words of the most high therefore we trust in the most high's promises right that he's made to the elect one who is convinced that Yahweh Shai has been raised from the dead. One who has become convicted that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah and the author of salvation. So salvation is going to come from the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. And that's what his name means. Yahweh Shai means in the Hebrew, he is the deliverer, right? He is the deliverer. So our Lord is the deliverer, right? Who the world ignorantly and incorrectly called Christ. He is the deliverer. That's what his name means. Yahweh Shai. He is the deliverer. Just as the Heavenly Father name means Yahweh, which means he is. So our Lord is the deliverer. Now, let's continue to show that. Because believing and applying this word is what's going to lead to salvation when you read it all throughout the Bible. The whole, all throughout the scriptures, the Old and New Testament, is about returning to the Most High. And in the last days, the believers that do, they're going to receive you know, all the promises. Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is his treasure. So the fear of God, Yahweh, the most high. Well, that, that's a treasure chest that you that you've received. An abundance of wealth, which comes by way of this knowledge. Fear in the Lord is going to lead to what? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So Isaiah 33 and 6 again. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So this wisdom and knowledge that we have is what's going to stabilize us when all hell break loose. Right? When the economy crash, which is all, you know, found in the scriptures. It's all biblical. When there's death, hell, and chaos, civil unrest, civil war in the streets. Oh, when all that's going on, those that possess this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are going to be protected by the Lord. This is going to be your protection. In the Hebrew, that's Magan. It's going to be your shield. What's going to shield you is this word and faith in it for the elect, right? You're going to be marked with the mark of the Wa. When you read in the, in the book of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, the mark of the Wa is exemption from judgment. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord Yahweh is his treasure. Now, it's another one here in the book of Ecclesiasticus going into the fear of the Lord. Now, let's show that. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as, as Sirach or Sirach 25 and verse 12, going into the fear of the Lord, because it said the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 12, it says the fear of Ha'adawan, which, which means the Lord in the Hebrew, the fear of Ha'adawan is the beginning of his love and the faith and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So those that have faith. They start the process of cleaving unto the Lord, right? I'll read that again. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 12. The fear of Ha'adawan or the Lord is the beginning of his love. And faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So those that truly have faith, they're starting the process now of cleaving unto the Most High. 
showing their faith by their works. So we must return to the law, statutes, and commandments to show that we truly have faith. Because the Apostle Paul said, faith without works is dead. And it says in 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, that started the seventh verse, that in order to escape all the hardships, the tribulation, the said perils, it was going to be by our faith and by our works, right? Our faith and by our works. So now, let's continue to show that because we have to apply this word in order to be protected. And let's go back to Hebrews. We were there a little bit ago. Let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And let's go down to the 23rd verse, Hebrews 10 and verse 23. This is the book of Hebrews 10 and verse 23. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. So we're supposed to hold fast unto what? This word, the profession of our faith, right? It says, without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. The Most High is faithful that promise because the scriptures tell us, and let's get that in Revelation. And we'll get that and come back because I want to get this word wavering. See what it says. It's the book of Revelation 19, right? It's in Revelation 19 going into um, holding fast to our faith because it's, because it said, you know, he is faithful that promised these things. Now, let's show that the Lord is faithful. He promised us what we will receive for returning and believing. Right. There's a reward for that. Um, let's see if I can get it. I think I just passed it. Um, Salakia, excuse me. Yep. Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse, right? That's that pure power, white being symbolic of purity and horses in the Bible being symbolic of power and behold a white horse, which is pure power. Our Lord is coming back right on the chariot. That's going to be bigger than the earth when you read the scriptures because it says every eye is going to see him, right? Every eye is going to see him. It says, and he that it says, behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him, which is our Lord, was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So the Lord's coming to judge the earth and make war. He's coming to wage war with all powers on the earth, which are which are all the ruling powers on the earth. He's coming to wage war. It's also found in Psalm 110th chapter and throughout the Bible. Now, it says, and he that said upon him, our Lord is called faithful and true. So now let's go back. Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast to profession, it says, of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. So our Lord is faithful and true because he is known as the word. When you read in John, the first chapter, you know, being that he is faithful and true, his words are faithful and true. So now. It says without wavering. Let's get the word here in the blue letter. G186. Strong's G186. Aklinase. Aklinase. So the word aklinase, it means not inclining, not inclining, firm, unmoved, being unmovable, meaning we have to be rooted. Without wavering, it says. Strong's definition. Um, not leaning, i.e., figuratively, firm without wavering it says without without leaning right so being firm being firm now i think this is also let me get it here in james let me see if it's a little bit different in james it's another scripture in james that goes into us not wavering james 1 and verse 6 and it reads but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that 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 wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. So those that waver, which are being double-minded, let's keep reading. Verse seven, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord or out of wine. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We can't be double-minded. We have to be fully persuaded in our own hearts of this truth and believe in it in, in its totality. We can't cherry pick what we want to believe. A, a The Holy Inspired Word of the Most High, you know, the scriptures, you know, are, are complete and are all righteous and holy when you read in the Bible. It tells you that in uh, Proverbs 30 and verse uh, five, right? All the words of the Lord are pure. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So now let's get the word waver. But he that wavereth, yes, yeah, a different word. And let's see. Yep, we got more here. So it tells us not to waver, right? Those that waver is like a wave in the sea. 
Meaning, ultimately, you don't see that wave no more. It just goes on back out. That's how those unbelievers, the unfaithful, are going to be in these last days. They're going to be like a wave in the sea. Now, this is G1252. Strong's G1252. Diacrino. Diacrino. The word diacrino. So it goes into wavering. To separate, to make a distinction, to discriminate, to prefer to learn by discrimination, to try, to decide. Here we go. To determine, to give judgment, to decide a dispute, to withdraw from one, to desert. So those that withdraw from the truth or desert, right? They leave their posts. They, they come into truth and for whatever reasons, they, they get deterred and, they, and, and then they leave and they go back into the world, right? A lot of people like that become scoffers anyway. One time they taught the word to become scoffers. Or they just disappear. They act like they never knew the truth to withdraw from one to desert. So those that desert to separate oneself in a hostile spirit to oppose strife with dispute content to be at variance, which means what distance, right? To be divided with oneself, hesitant doubt. So to the doubt, to be hesitant. We're not we're not supposed to waver. We're not supposed to be hesitant because we we're supposed to be fully persuaded in our hearts and, and know that this word the Bible tells us is a sure word of prophecy, right? So let's read that again. James 1 and 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So, you know, that's he that wavereth. One more precept comes to mind. We'll close it out, right? So this word we have, what makes us sure of it is that this word is faithful and true. These are the words of the Most High. They're not just words found in a book, right? Empty rhetoric. It's not some romance novel, right? Or a Harry Potter novel you know, or some kind of folklore or fiction. Second Peter 1 and 19, it says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. So those that have this truth have a sure word of prophecy. Prophecy means to speak before. This word was given before time for the times we're in now. Second Peter 1 and 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light. This word is like a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So unto the coming of our Lord. And this word, right, is a sure word of prophecy. It's prophetic. It was already written before, right, what was going to happen. And now we're just living it out in the last days. We're falling back into our lots. Because all the all that the elect are predestined. This was already predetermined when you read in the book of um, all throughout the Bible. But one example uh, is in the book of what is that? I'll get it here in a second. Romans 15 and four for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So prophecy, things that were written before, right, are, are being played out now. And it was written for us to have understanding, learning now. That we through patience, see, we have to be patient and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the, the words of the most high is what gives us comfort, comfort of the scriptures. Right. So lucky. This thing just popped up here anyway. Um, so comfort of the scriptures. Now, what is that? I don't know why this, my mind went blank on this. I think it's Galatia. Uh, this is scripture I want to get. Um, give me one sec. Try to remember this scripture, and I'll close it out with that. Um, maybe it's oh man, maybe it's Galatians. No, that's the scripture I go over all the time too. My mind just went blank. It's all through the Spirit of the Lord, but it, it speaks on. Um, it speaks on how. We, let me just put predestined. Right, the scriptures say that. Uh, um, let's see if I can find this real quick. From say Ephesians, I don't know why. <laughs> Ephesians one and verse three. Blessed be the blessed be the power or the God and the Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. 
according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So we pray we are the elect because the elect were chosen from the foundation of the world, which is the one third. Once again, that's mentioned in Zechariah 13, verses 7 through 9. Ephesians 1 and 4, as according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And here's the point, having predestinated us, so the elect were already predestined, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So this was all according to the pleasure, right, and the will of the Most High, the will of who people call God, Yahweh. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying, exhorting, and comforting unto you believers, which is Philipp which is Philippians 4 and 7, the peace that surpasses all understanding. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. All praises, honor, and glory be to our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, and by way of the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakodash. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like-minded elders to teach this word in truth and in sincerity. Barakim La, Habayath, Madabada, blessings to the house of David, which are the brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence to make their calling and election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Amashiach Yabushai, is at hand, and to the Akim, Wagwaf, which are the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached. Unto you I say, Shalom. Shalom be to the hopeful elect.